If you walk into a place and you see someone on a pulpit, that denotes that they probably have some level of authority in that place. Now in this life, there are those who judge with integrity, but they're not seeking any elevation or personal gain. And there are those who don't seek out positions of leadership, but it comes to them. And when it does, they act with a great sense of amana, with responsibility. And then there are those that establish relationships with others, but they have no ulterior motives to seek some sort of access or high place here. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, Tilka darul akhirah. نَجْعَلُهَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادًا وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This is the ultimate abode, being the hereafter. We reserve it for those who seek neither elevation, meaning through tyranny, nor do they seek corruption on earth. And the best end is for the people of taqwa, the people of piety. And that's why Isa alayhi salam, Jesus the son of Mary, was narrated to have said, طُوبَى لِلْمُتَوَاضَعِينَ فِي الدُّنْيَا هُمْ أَصْحَابُ الْمَنَابِرِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Glad tidings to those that walk humbly on this earth. They are inheritors of pulpits on the Day of Judgment. There are levels of elevation on the Day of Judgment that denote some sort of distinction. While many are familiar with manabir being the pulpits of light, which we'll get to, there are other levels before that. So the Prophet ﷺ said that there are three people who will be spared from the shock of that day. And they'll be spared from the hisab, meaning from actually being held accountable. And he said وسلم, that they're going to be on kathibin min misk, which is like a hill of musk, until Allah finishes holding everyone else accountable. So imagine these people that are standing on hills of musk and they're off to the side during and after the hisab, after the accountability. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters them into paradise after it's all done. The Prophet ﷺ said that these three people are a man who recites the Qur'an sincerely seeking the pleasure of Allah and he guides the people with it and they are pleased with him. So this is a person who's truly Ahlul Qur'an from the people of Qur'an. Then a da'i who is a preacher that calls people to the five prayers, again, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you have a servant that sets things right between himself and his Lord and between himself and those that are entrusted to him. So the underlying theme here is that the reciter of Quran and the preacher, they could technically seek elevation in this world, but they're doing it only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the person who has an upper hand in a relationship could easily transgress, but he doesn't out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other hand, the most hated people are the tyrants and they are of varying types. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to wait until the questioning to make his disdain known for them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, that the arrogance and the tyrants will be resurrected on the day of judgment like tiny little atoms. They're not even ants. And they're small people like they actually are. And the Prophet ﷺ said the people will trample upon them due to their disgrace before Allah Azza On the other hand, you look and you see these elevated platforms of light. Who do they belong to? The Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَلَى مَنَابِرَ مِنْ نُورِ عَنْ يَمِينَ الرَّحْمَانِ Verily, those who were just will be in the presence of Allah upon pulpits of light near the right hand of the Most Merciful. وَكِلْتَا يَدَيْهِ يَمِينَ And the Prophet ﷺ said both of his hands are right and that there is no deficiency. So who are these people? Are they just leaders of nations? No. He said الَّذِينَ يَعْدِلُونَ فِي حُكْمِهِمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ وَمَا وَلُوا That these are people who practice justice in their judgments with their families and in all that they did, whoever was entrusted to them. And Allah knows when someone is in a position to judge, they have immense power, sometimes unchecked. So when they use it right, what does Allah do? He gives them an immense pulpit and position on the Day of Judgment that everyone can admire. All the while, the tyrants are being trampled and the people of justice are being raised up on these platforms. Now, this is someone who judged with justice with the people and stayed mindful of Allah. The other category of those who have manabir, these pulpits, also includes the relationship of people to people. But this one is laced not with justice, but with the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to appreciate this category, think of people fighting each other on the Day of Judgment. 
and they're assigning blame to one another. Why? Because they supported each other in transgression. So they're literally asking Allah, show me that person who led me astray so I can trample him under my feet. I want to jump on that person and beat them up because of what they did. And they're shouting out in regret. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, close friends, close friends who are going to be enemies to each other on that day, except for the pious. And they're putting their fists in their mouths out of nervousness. And they're saying, Ya waylata, laytani lam attakhir fulan and khalila. I wish I never took that person as a friend. So while these people are quarreling and trying to stomp on each other and denouncing one another and yelling at each other for leading each other away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have these pulpits of light. And Allah calls out, Where are al mutahabuna fi jalali? Lahum manabiru min nur. Where are those people that loved each other for my sake? They have pulpits of light. Those people that love each other for the sake of my majesty, that are on these pulpits of light, they're going to be admired by even the prophets and the martyrs. And in one narration, the companions said, tell us, Ya Rasulullah, who are these people? And he said, these are people who love one another for the sake of Allah. They come from faraway lands. They have no family ties. I swear by Allah, their faces will glow and they will be sitting on these pulpits of light. And Allah will put light on their faces and light on their garments. And they will have no fear when the other people have fear. And they will have no grief when the other people are grieving. And then the Prophet وسلم, recited, Allah inna awliya Allah, la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. Behold, verily, as for the friends of Allah, they have no fear nor shall they grieve. So the pulpits of light in the hereafter are for those who didn't seek prominence or position in this life, nor did they betray the trust of leadership that was given to them for the sake of some worldly gain, nor did they maintain relationships with people with some lowly worldly motives. These were people that loved and led with the light of Allah. And so what is Allah doing? He's elevating them with that light in a way that even the prophets and the martyrs would admire them on the day of judgment. فأما من ثقلت موازينه فهو في عيشة راض